it can be really tempting to buy an inexpensive security camera from Amazon. After all, some of these cameras have thousands of positive reviews and sell for less than $50. But if you're serious about keeping your home or business safe, then you should watch this video till the end because I'm gonna give you a few reasons why you shouldn't buy cameras from Amazon and what you should get instead. In some instances, people have spent over $1,000 on cameras from Amazon only to be told that the company's servers will be shutting down, rendering their cameras useless. That's an expensive lesson to learn and that's one of the biggest risks when it comes to buying cheap cameras from Amazon. This is not the only issue with cheap cameras. And in order to demonstrate this, I've purchased two cameras for my own testing. The first is this highly rated TP-Link Tapo Wi-Fi camera. And the other is this VZoom PoE turret camera. Both of these cameras are rated for outdoor use and they were pretty cheap, costing less than $50 at the time of purchase. I'll be testing and judging these cameras by three important criteria, which are image quality, app and software support, and build quality slash longevity. Without good image quality to back up your security system, it can be difficult or even impossible to identify a suspect, especially when the footage is blurry or low resolution. The first camera that I tested was the TP-Link Tapo. It was pretty straightforward to set up this camera on the app, but the first thing that I noticed was the poor image quality. It was really bad out of the box. It was so bad that I thought there must be something wrong with the camera or at least something wrong with the way that it was configured. After digging through the settings, I realized that the camera was set to 1080p data saving mode. And while I don't understand why TP-Link would set their cameras to 720p by default, at least it was relatively easy to change it back to the full resolution. Once the camera was set to 2K mode, the image quality was a lot better. What about the V-Zoom camera? Well, the V-Zoom has a resolution of 5 megapixel, so it should be slightly better than the TP-Link's 4 megapixel sensor. And that was pretty much my experience. The VZoom camera was slightly sharper and had a bit more contrast than the TP-Link. It also had a wider dynamic range, which you'll notice if you look at the top right corner. On the TP-Link, the door leading outside of our office is completely blown out, while on the VZoom, it was able to retain a bit more detail. At nighttime, we can see that the TP-Link camera is really struggling, despite claiming to have a starlight sensor in their product description. Oh wait, sorry, it's not a starlight sensor. It actually says start light sensor. But anyways, the starlight sensor on this camera must be a really old model because you can barely see me when I'm entering the office at night. You can only see my outline, which almost blends into the background completely. Also, the TP-Link camera has a white light built in and it was turned on at the time that I entered the office. But as you can see, it didn't help much. How about the VZoom? Well, the VZoom camera performed a lot better than the TP-Link at nighttime. This camera also has a white LED, which helped to brighten up the room. As I entered, the camera was able to see me quite clearly. And although there was a bit of ghosting, the VZoom camera actually did a much better job than the TP-Link. So that's how these cameras look in an office. But what if you plan to install cameras outside your house? How well do these Amazon cameras perform in a residential setting at night? To find out, I set up these cameras outside my house, monitoring the front yard and driveway. First up is the TP-Link. I had the white LED disabled for this first test, and we can see that the camera is struggling to catch me as I walk by. And even as I peek into the car, the only time that you can really see me clearly is when I'm standing perfectly still. The slightest bit of movement results in a blurry image, and this is most likely due to the low bitrate that's being used on Wi-Fi cameras like this. Unfortunately, there's no way to increase the bitrate from the camera settings. Turning on the white LED didn't help much either. Moving objects were still completely blurry. Also, the white light was extremely bright and very noticeable to anyone passing by. And I personally wouldn't leave this white LED turned on unless I lived out in the countryside. 
Next up, we have footage from the VZoom camera. I only tested the VZoom camera with the white light turned on because there was no way for me to disable it, or at least I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. It's hard to tell if the VZoom or the TP-Link performed better in this scenario. Both cameras experienced massive pixelation and blurring on moving subjects. While the VZoom's image was slightly brighter, it still had difficulty picking up detail unless I was standing completely still. And to be honest, it wasn't even that dark outside while I was testing. The moon was full, the skies were clear, and there were also a couple streetlights nearby. Despite these great conditions, both cameras performed very poorly at night. And if you're wondering if the cameras would have done better in IR mode, I also tested that on the VZoom turret camera. Not only was I still blurry, but now the image was completely void of color. I wouldn't recommend using an IR camera for residential use considering that we have color options available. For example, I also tested a Uniview 4 megapixel Alview camera. This is one of the best cameras you can get for low light performance, and it completely outclassed the TP-Link and the VZoom. Here's how it looked like in the office at night. And in the residential scene, the Uniview did an excellent job as well. Even with the white lights disabled, the image is bright and clear with very little ghosting. If something were to happen at night, this is definitely the camera I'd want to have monitoring my property. At this point, you may already be convinced that these cheap Amazon cameras are not worth your time or money, but image quality is only one piece of the whole package. We also need to talk about the app and software support, as well as the build quality of these cameras. It's important that your security camera has reliable software that supports it. You should be able to view your cameras from your phone, as well as from a computer or laptop. In terms of app support, I found that the TP-Link's app was pretty good. It was easy enough to find the app on the Google Play Store, as well as to add the camera to my phone. I did find it a bit annoying how often it kept asking me to try their 30-day cloud storage trial, but otherwise I have no complaints about it. Now, trying to view the TP-Link camera on my computer was a completely different story. After searching through their website for an answer, I found an official forum post recommending third-party applications like VLC Media Player, or even downloading an Android emulator in order to view the TP-Link. While I was eventually able to get it working on VLC, not only is this method quite complicated for new users, it's also unprofessional. If you wanted to view multiple cameras, you'd have to open multiple instances of VLC Media Player, and there's no way to do playback either. That can only be done through the app on the phone. The VZoom camera was slightly better in terms of software support. To get it working on the phone, you need to download the VZoom Pro app and sign up for an account. To add the camera, you must enable both location services and Bluetooth, and then click Add Device. After about 15 seconds, the device will be added to your phone and you can start live view and playback. There are also a few settings you can change in the app, and overall it was quite similar to the TP-Link's app. On the computer, I was able to view the camera by logging in through the web interface using the IP address of the camera, and it worked pretty well, allowing me to download footage through the web browser. However, there was no native camera viewing software for Windows. There was a Mac version, however, I don't have a MacBook in order to test it. And while there was a link to download the Windows software, when you click the link, it just brings you to a 404 page and the VZoom website was relatively empty as well. I couldn't find any way to contact them, which shows me that the after-sale support is basically non-existent. If this VZoom camera were to have any issues, there's basically no way to get it fixed. You'd have to buy a new one. But what are the chances that your camera will actually run into any issues? This brings me to my last point, which is the build quality and longevity of these cameras.
While I don't have long term experience with these cameras, I could tell just by holding them for a few seconds how flimsy and cheaply made they are. Also, there were multiple users who left a negative review on Amazon stating how the TP-Lynx camera turned red after a few months and it wouldn't connect to the Wi-Fi, essentially rendering the camera dead. And while there are no reviews on the VZoom camera stating that it failed, it could be due to simply less people having purchased this camera in general. There were only 20 reviews on the VZoom camera's page compared to over 10,000 reviews for the TP-Link. But based on the build quality, I would be very surprised if either of these cameras lasted for more than two years. I've also spoken to many CCTV professionals in my job who install hundreds of cameras per year. And they've told me that the cheap Amazon brands like Lorex and TP-Link are the first to fail. And again, usually within one or two years. And not just one, but multiple people have told me exactly the same thing. On the other hand, professional brands like Axis and Uniview are designed to last for years without needing replacement. I personally know of a few Uniview systems that are approaching six or seven years without any camera failure. And these are despite the cameras being exposed to the elements all year round. So if you buy a camera on Amazon, don't be surprised if it fails within a year or two. And this failure could happen at the worst time, like if you need to download footage after a break-in, only to realize that the camera wasn't working after all. The point of this video is not to fault anyone for buying a cheap security camera, but to make you aware of the potential downsides. A security camera is something that you want to install once and have peace of mind that it will continue monitoring your property for years to come. There should be no question about whether the company you purchased your cameras from will continue to exist in a few years and who you need to contact for support. If you do purchase cameras from Amazon, you should treat them as a learning tool, allowing you to become familiar with how security cameras work before investing in a proper system. So where should you buy security cameras from instead? And which brands are reliable? As I've already mentioned, Uniview is a great option in terms of price to performance, but there are also companies like Axis, Hanwha, and Vigilon who make excellent cameras with cutting edge software and hardware. You can expect to spend at least $1,000 or more for a full camera system, including the video recorder, a hard drive, and multiple security cameras. And yes, these systems are more expensive than what you'll find on Amazon, but these cameras have much better image quality, software support, and reliability. Anyways, that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up or subscribe for more security camera videos in the future. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.